Hallelujah. To those that are in the house this morning, we truly give those thanks to you. Thank God that we can be gathered one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God says, where the two are two, we are one. This name, he promises to be open, so we know that he is here today. Hallelujah. We give God thanks to all of our online viewers. Welcome you this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mighty God upon you today. Hallelujah. Let us just bow our heads in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks for this day, for this time, for your presence. We thank you for your mercy, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, O oh God, that we can come before you today, that we can assemble ourselves there, God, to lift up your holy name. Holy God, today, as we pray, as we worship, dear God, as we from you, I pray, Almighty God, that you will minister in your presence. Minister, dear God, come in, dear God, and just have your way. I pray, dear God, that you will touch each and every person here this morning, touch each and every person who's viewing online, whether it's on Zoom, on YouTube, on Facebook. My God, I pray that you will touch each and every individual today, oh God. Father, I pray that you will touch even our minister and servant as he stands to minister your word today. Touch our pastor in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I will commit this entire service into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. We give thanks to because we know that he fights our battles. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's always fighting for us. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is fighting for us. God is on our side. He is overcome. He is we will not be Jesus you are It's coming in the mood in our shape He has overcome yes. He has overcome We will not be shaken We will not be moved Jesus you are So I will I will shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are him. He's carrying our burden, covering our shame. He has overcome. Yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are him. Yeah. 
Jesus, glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory, Father, I give you praise, the victory belongs to you, Lord, the victory belongs to you, Lord, I said the victory belongs to you, Lord, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Victory belong to you. Oh God. Victory belongs to you. We are not a defeated people. Children of the most high God. We are not an defeated people. Royalty is in our blood. Hallelujah. Because we are the children of the most high God. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Victory belongs to you. No matter what the enemy brings our way. Victory belongs. It be love, it be love to us. Hallelujah. Victory be love to you. We may not be certain of tomorrow. Tomorrow was never promised to us. But we are sure today. Victory belongs to Jesus. And we are the children of God. So victory belongs to us. Come on now. Reach out there and claim your victory in the name of Jesus. Rise up and claim your victory today. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. I say the devil is a liar. As you continue to worship in house here, maybe you're outside on the street viewing, maybe you're in your living room, maybe you're in your kitchen, wherever you are, Hallelujah. as you continue to worship, I want to welcome our minister and servant for today, if no other person than Reverend Pastor Timal. Today, our pastor is not with us. She's on a little leave, but as we continue to pray for her, we know that victory belongs to her. Amen. Glory be to God. Pastor Timal, would you come at this time? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pleasant good morning and greetings in Jesus' name. Warm welcome to each and every one of you. Those online, we welcome your viewing uh, with us this morning. I count it a joy and a privilege to be here this morning. Um, to return God for your pastor, given me this opportunity to share with you all here this morning. A prayer, sincere prayer, is with her. God uh, is a miracle working God. He's a healing God. He can do all things. And as uh, servants of His, He has promised to take care of us. So this morning, I'll, you can have your seat uh, to return God for this opportunity. We, uh, as the church, 
is living in very challenging times. We are not living in ordinary times. The last time I spoke to you here and come and know, time has changed rapidly. Things are moving on. God, if we are sitting and waiting, God is not waiting. He is fulfilling his purposes and his plans. His coming is at hand. So this morning, I would like to share with you from the book of Second Corinthians, a reading of a passage of scripture from Second Corinthians chapter one. And uh, it will tell us a little bit about the church, the early church fathers, and the commitment that the church, early church made. For the church is not building and not name of organization. The church is human beings that God have raised up. There is a fight, there is a struggle in this last and closing hours of time. Isaiah have prophesied about these times. The, 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 the fulfillment of this is beginning to manifest itself today. And um, even Isaiah, God speaking to him, asked, whom shall I teach and wisdom or doctrine? They that have been weaned with the milk of the word were able to understand what is happening today. We have to understand the church is not just every member that gather in buildings. It's people that have been convinced and convicted that the spirit of the living God is in here. He lives in here. So every one of us, even Paul writing into the Corinthian church, they are false brethren. These are strange things. I am not here to, I am here just to clarify some of the things that the word has have been, uh, have been spoken in the word. For us, we are not just supposed to be a religious minded people. The church not, is not religion. The church is relationship with a living God. So if anybody is in religion, they will not understand spiritual truths. They will not understand spiritual things. When Jesus came on this earth and walked among religious minded people, they could not envision they could not understand the things. They were his own people. He said, I come unto my own, and my own receive me not, because they could not understand. They were lost in religion. Today, we are living in relationship. The Holy Spirit brings us into relationship with eternity, with a living God. And this is something that today we are, as a church, yes, we're struggling. I am here just to preach a gospel. My own personal views didn't matter, but I'm speaking the word. The word is what matters this morning. So I'm reading a passage of scripture here. You know, right now in this class, this, every word in the Bible is so, so, so much real. But if we are in the spirit, you could understand we could be able to know, hey, hold on, cling on. So I'm reading from chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints who are in all Achaia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or 
If we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast because we know that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so also you will partake of the consolation. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, for our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a debt, and does deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. You also helping together in prayer for us, that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the gift granted to us through many. For our boasting is this, the testimony of our conscience that we conducted ourselves in the world in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, and more abundantly towards you. For we are not writing any other things to you than what you read or understand. Now I trust you will understand even to the end. As also you have understood us in part, that we are, are your boast, as you also are ours in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pause at a point there and let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you this morning for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for the anointing and I thank you for the living word, dear Father. I pray today this word will bring life and bring clarity to the minds of those who are listening to your word, Father. Lord God, we pray that it will be able to help us as the church to be who you have chosen us and whom you have appointed us to be their God, to represent you as ambassadors in this last and closing hours of time. Bless us as a body, bless us as a people, dear Father, and let your divine will in heaven be done on earth in the lives and affairs of your body, which is the church. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, the world is faced with a, a challenge of life and living. Every human being have a concern about their, their, their livelihood. Every human being have a concern about how can I navigate my way in these challenging times. We have, or if you could observe and understand, the problem we are faced with today is not a Trinidad problem, it's a world problem. All over the world, humans are being threatened to, to accede to the world's order or stop existing, as I will put it, because you will not be able to purchase goods and services and you will not be able to function in your normal everyday life. The question I would like to know, isn't that a strange thing? We are a church in the midst of this. Isn't that a strange thing? First time in the history of the world that this demand is made on the world's population. But the enemy, which is the devil, is subtle. And to us, many of us today, we think, well, boy, I have to live in him. I have to survive. I have to get my income. And the threat is what is my concern as a member of the body of Christ. Because God does not even threaten us. He gave us the opportunity to choose. We have been preaching this gospel over and over time that we all have an opportunity to choose. When we preach the gospel to individuals, we tell them this is not a force. God does not force it on us. We bring information to you so you could make a choice to choose if you would want to serve Jesus or not serve Jesus. This is God's instruction to us, to the human race. But he told, he told us the enemy is like a royal lion. He comes and he demands. You see, one of the things we understand, when Jesus walked this earth, 
he had given us information. This information didn't die when he went on the cross and go on him. It's for us today. When he said, take no thought of what you will eat or you will drink. We, was, we preach that when, when, it, when we, everything is going good and we are not threatened, it's easy to be a Christian. You know? Christianity is okay when everything is going my way. You know? But when someone has to make a decision to stand on what God is and who God is, it's a big difference. You know? It's then we will know that Peter warned and said, well, do, do not take a strain when this fiery trial. What is it fire? None of these little things you that be going home and you're facing and you're living comfortable is no fiery trial. You know? Fiery trial is no, it is a, when you have to give your life up, your livelihood. You'll have to make decisions. This is the church in the 21st century. This is the church that Jesus Christ is calling out today. Peter warned us and said that even the very elect could be deceived and, and, and a few could be saved. How, wh wh why was all those statements made? If everything going honky dory for us, if we are seen to the world's demand, are we alight? This is some interesting things that the church have to say. You know, the church is in a divided form. It's come like in politics, church become divided. Church not supposed to be divided with none of these things. You know. The church is a living body of Christ. Jesus is the one we look to. Jesus is the one who is giving us and, and, and calling our shots in our lives today. And all is because the spirit lives in us. If we continue reading the scripture, you would see the Apostle Paul going on to say, and in the confidence, in this confidence, I intended to come to you before that you might have a second benefit. To pass by way of you to Macedonia, to come again from Macedonia to you and, in the, and be helped by you on my way to Judah. Therefore, when I was planning this, did I do it lightly? Or the things I plan, do I plan according to the flesh? That with me there should be yes, yes, and no, no. But as God is faithful, our word to you was not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, and Paul went on to say, by me, Sylvanus and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now, he who established us with you in Christ and has anointed us in God was, was also, who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. The church of Jesus Christ is being guided and led by the spirit of a living God. We all have his Holy Spirit seal in us. If you are a person born again and living for Jesus, the Holy Spirit will be your guide. The Holy Spirit will direct you. It will not go with the world decision. It will not go when the world say, go, all of us go. When the world say, back, all of us back. The church is not that. The church have principles that we stand by. And we have to define it now. We have to have somebody in this, in the nations of the earth today who could stand up for Jesus. Because if everybody go the direction that the world is saying, he said to be an enemy, to be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. And you know, sometimes we cannot define the difference between what we, he said, you are in the world, but not of the world. We are living, the church is here today, but we not belong to them. And that is something that I do not know how we can define that. Because today everybody conforming to the will, because you know what? Food on your table. So then where is your faith in this living God? This is why I, this passage of scripture, when you know, reading the scripture, the Lord have laid it upon my heart to, to, to see where there is in the world where, where, where man's life was threatened and they would stand. Paul and they had this experience. The very life was threatened. Our life today is being threatened, not by corona, but by demand.
from the world system. That is where our threat is. God holds our lives in his hand. That is why he said, take no thought of what you will eat or drink. Jesus in his right walk on this earth taught these things. These things disappear. And we quoted to the unsaved man. But that is not for the, right, not for the body. Right? Only for the unsaved people. Eh? It had to apply to us. You and I must know, as Paul said, we know God whole our life. So we didn't, we wasn't concerned about the debt. How many of us here are concerned about death and dying? When we read Isaiah, God speaking to Isaiah through his spirit was saying that I'm bringing destruction on the earth in, in Isaiah somewhere around chapter 11 there. And I'm going to bring cruel judgment upon the nations of the earth. Cruel judgment. God is bringing judgment on the nations of the earth. Now, if we all observe what is happening in the world today, when we read Matthew, we do understand wars, rumors of wars. This big nation, China, bring a big warship in Alaska, uh, close to American waters there. Then they have uh, taken over Taiwan, running rockshot over these people, intimidating them. Right now, from Monday, there is going to be a big um, conference for 10 days in America against what will happen with China. These are these is perilous times. These are difficult days. The church is there. I, I know Jesus' church is a glorious church. I'm thankful to be part of this glorious body that is called the church today. And when, when we cannot define what is the world, and what is the church in the world? We are two separate people. We are not the same people. We are in the world. We are representing God on the world here. But we are being threatened and we are being attacked. And this is something that we can conform to the world standing. You see, in Isaiah, time went for me to go through and get the full detail for you to read it. But you could, you, you, you could look through it up in, in, in Isaiah and you would see where Satan was brought down from heaven, he make nations tremble because this he rules the world power. That's why he could have put Jesus uh, when he was fasting and, and say, all the kingdoms of the earth is given unto me and I will give whomsoever I will, I will give. Bow down and worship me. Today, we all as, an, as a church have to understand these things is real. Jesus is coming for a people that is prepared, a people who is willing to give up their lives, give up their livelihood, people who will stand up and declare that I trust in this living God. As the apostle Paul and him said, we know that he delivers us from so great a death and does, not, and, and does deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. Do you know God could still deliver you today when you make a stand for Jesus? But when we do not want to make a stand for Jesus, and all of us conforming, this is where he said that, 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 that even few people will be able to make that decision. Eh? The very elect could be deceived. Eh? We are approaching that time. And the church have to be aware. And as I said earlier in the, in the introduction message that um, he's speaking to Isaiah, said, who will I teach knowledge, doctrine? He that have been weaned from the, the milk of the word, he will understand line upon line. That is how God is. Expecting. I see the man who's going to be destroyed line upon line. The world will go and destroy them. So as the church, we have to help educate each other and cause us all to know that if we want to make it into the eternal world, we have to make a decision to carry this gospel. We cannot worry about what is going to happen to us, how we will live, how we will survive. God has promised good for us. God has promised that he will take care of us. Do we still stand on the promises of God? Or we bow into the enemy? This is, this is my concern today for the church of God. This is God's concern for his people today. Because when we look in the vast way, and you, you listen, you hear how people responding to these challenges, they will say, where in the Bible say that? The Bible is a book that is spiritually discerned. Natural mind can understand. And if you're waiting for in a natural mind to understand this book, 
and understand what is happening here, it takes the spirit of God to give you revelation. So this is the reason we walk in the spirit that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We will not live in the flesh. We will understand spiritual truths. And we'll be able to be representative of Jesus in this last and closing hours of time. God is depending on people who he could trust. He gave us life. We must make a stand for him today. But watch the pointers all over the world. And you would realize that we need Jesus. People still need the Lord today. And people will still stand up for people who could stand up and declare the Lordship of Jesus. What kind of witnesses will we be when we bow to the world and tell our own, say, man, you believe in Jesus. What, what, me and you, same level, boy. Me and you are the same fear, boy. Don't we have the same fear? If I could stand up and make sure I show you I do not fear, and I could stand up for God and God could come in for me, you would be able to see some reason why you should believe in him. But when all of us in the same boat, what is the difference? And, and, and what makes the church the church? Is serving a supernatural God. Who can do supernatural things? Who could make a big example of what and who he is and why I believe in him? I can believe in God and then fear and go back to the world, stand out and roll with the world. Me and the world can be in the same page. We have to make sure, but the world will not like Jesus. Just as the world did not receive me, they can, they will not receive you, know your message. And this is the reason why today we have a challenge. But you and I have to know who live in here. He has sealed the Holy Spirit in here. We are not our own. We have been bought with a price. With the pressure as the precious blood of Jesus is given to us today. He purchased us with his blood. And I am not supposed to be doing my thing, as Paul said here, not with man, human wisdom. I must make decision. I must make decision based on God's divine spirit giving me the strength to make a, way, a, a decision that will represent him. This is not fool, being foolish. We, we could be foolish for Jesus, Paul said. To the natural mind and natural people, we go come and look like stupid. You give up your job, you give up this, you will do that. When we was to preach, when we was to teach this thing about the days coming when men will have to make decisions, we never thought it would come so fast in our, in our day and, and the church go, didn't go up. Everybody was, was saying the church will go before anything like anything had to happen. All well, doesn't hear that sometimes. So you and I do have to prove nothing. But what he said, Peter said, arm yourself like the same suffering that Jesus suffered, that you will have to suffer. He said the last days is up in First Peter chapter 4. He said, This is the last days is upon us. The end is at hand. And when Peter write that, nothing like what we see here today wasn't there. But it's written for us today. It was written for us who have to represent Jesus today. Because God had promised to take care of his people. We could talk all of that when we could witness to somebody, you know? but if we have to do it. As we are called upon today to do, are we willing to do it? How many people are willing to lay down and say, you know what, I will stand up for Jesus and declare his lordship, and I isn't concerned about the material goods? All right, then. So the Corinthian church said, beware of false brethren. No, I doesn't want to say, me and I, this is the word I'm talking here. This is not my own understanding. This is the word. Beware of false brethren. And false apostles we are amongst them. That what Paul writing says. And he said, uh, they, oh, you know, the day end is their belly. How many people are protecting the belly right now? They're telling you, go ahead and do it because you're, your belly, you have to eat, you have to drink, you have to, you have to survive. He said, but no marvel that. Satan himself is transformed as an angel of light. If ever them scripture have meaning, today we must wake up and, 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 and bring it alive in our heart. That Satan, God allowed that to happen. That Satan himself is transformed as an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness. That is not my uh, own interpretation. That is the word of God. 
forewarned about those things. Why was he why was he warning the church about those times and those things? Isn't those times approaching us or even falling upon our laps right now? And the church, if you're not uh, spiritually connected to God, you could you could fall for the trap. Because you have to understand this is decision, this is your salvation at stake here. Now. This is our salvation, and I'm saying that without contradicting it. Because this is what the word warns us about. But where is the church? You see, when we're not reading, when we're not in, into a relationship with God, we will be able to swallow anything. Because it satisfies our, our, our own agenda. But when you're in Christ, it's not your agenda and my agenda, it's God's agenda. We are living to fulfill God's agenda. He raised us up. Even in this, um, in, in this same writing to the church at Corinth in, in, in chapter 5, you were saying, for we know that if our earthly people afraid to die and fear in death, and he said, if our, if, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God. Do we believe that? Because we want to live here and don't live it. Do we believe we have a building from God? A house not made with hands eternal in the heaven? And I first of all, this body is called a tent. It's spirit living. We'll be having a body that is ready. Jesus glorified body shows us that proof. But this, in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. Some of these things doesn't mean nothing to many of us. Revelation talk about you. Oh, the man that is rich and dead, he don't know that he's he's miserable, he's poor, he's blind, and he's naked. That is in the book of Revelation that John was um, speaking through, and, and the Lord said to you know, I stand on your door and knock. This this this, this is nakedness means to say when you go up there and you're not clothed with the armor of God, you're not clothed with the word of God. It, does the word mean anything to us when we went when we go and do our own thing, friends? This is the reason why he said that they, they, they will know knowledge and they will have no, no doctrine weaned from the word of God through the spirit of God given us. Feeding the spirit man inside of us is meaningful to us. For we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed that mortality may be swallowed up by life. We don't believe that. I don't know, maybe I was watching the other day, the, recently on the, um, this, this week gone here, some of the billionaire in America, Bezos and these men who, who going up in space and making their trips and things, they are saying, you know, now what we're doing, they're making an a, a, a ingredient that could help keep you looking young and be young, and they're now talking about being immortalized on the earth. For many people, they must, the rich man, the, the billionaire, don't say, so the, 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 the producer say, but then there's only the billionaires who are able to live on the earth. Who could afford that type of thing? But we know different gods say, when I'm ready to call your life, you could be what you, you, you're going home. But the natural man, the man that is outside here, he don't put, see any ways how he could immortalize himself here and be put on immortal. So immortality is real. The devil know about it. We must realize that we know how to remain here. We will be full with all, all, all of life in immortality. This mortal must put on immortality. But what do we want to uh, protect ourselves here and, and, and think that God can do it for us? God expect us to make a stand for him in a time like this. For now he who has prepared us, and I want to take note of this verse, he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has also given us the spirit as a guarantee. Again, he repeat back himself about the spirit being your guarantee. This is the reason we encourage people to walk in the spirit. When we live in the spirit, we will have life eternal. When we live in the flesh, we will have corruption. And this is the difference, my friends, today. The church is not just every member who sit down. The church is people who know God, fear God, and want God morning, noon, and night. We just don't want God for things. We want God because he is God. And we have a purpose here this morning to fulfill this, this work that he have called us to do. So this morning, I encourage your heart. 
The Apostle Paul says, so we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. How many of us only walk in by sight and not by faith? It takes faith to please God. Anna. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We must believe God. We are confident, yes, well, please, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. The Apostle Paul said, boy, I am confident I'd rather be absent from this body. How many of you want to be absent from this body when you want to protect this body here? Yeah. You want to be absent from this body? And left this world? Yes, yes sir, you might only be one yes. But how many of the world, yes, is there? Yeah. People want to survive here. Yeah. They don't want to go the other side of life. But God raised us up to do our work here for him so that this body, he will give us strength. Without food, we could make Moses and then walk for 40 days and thing without food and all kind of thing and, and survive to do God's bidding, friend. We have to understand the least now about food is not, not an issue. We have the word to fill us and God will strengthen this frame once he wants to use it. So no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. What does that mean? Only when people do obey upon us? We don't understand that the enemy weapon is against us, friends. He's showing that at us. But we want to go in bed with him. We want to live in the world with him. We do not want to make a stand for a God who is able to be a, a, a victor and conqueror over the enemy. We, the church of God, is called to conquer the enemy on this earth. God is depending on us through Jesus Christ, spirit living in us. We need to understand. And I, I want to just wrap up here saying from verse and therefore we make it our aim. How many of us make it our aim, friends, whether present or absent, to be well-pleasing to him? Are we living to please the master? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Are we, are, are we, are we concerned about that? Knowing, therefore, Paul writing says, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are well known to God, and I also trust we are well known in your conscience. For we do not commend ourselves again to you, but give you opportunity to boast on our behalf that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. You see, God searches heart. You know? We serving God from a heart perspective. You know? We must already to give an answer to man. You know? But when, when, we, when we bow into the world, what answer are we giving them? Can we, can we say, man, say we make a difference? For we are beside ourselves, it is for God. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. Or if we are of a song mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us, because we judged us that if one died for all, then all died. I want to say to us, and he died for all, that those who live should, no, should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Yet, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespass to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. If we as the church don't have that ability to perform that, how come? What's the purpose? When we stand the condemnation and the criticism and we stand all out what is coming upon us, we do that for the sake of representing Jesus. And as I close with you this morning, I want to say to us, Paul also writing, did not say what shall separate us from the love of God, but he said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And he said, shall peril, shall persecution, these things we call it what? Paul call it, he personalizes. Is the enemy 
that is walking, that what we see as water and abstract is living. I want to say to us this morning, the world is not abstract, is a living individual running the affairs of the kingdoms of this world. And we must understand that is why he has given to us to define where we are and know when to make decisions that will not bring us under. And if we don't have wisdom to know that, I don't know where else we could, unless we are in Christ, we wouldn't be able to see that wisdom. Because the natural mind will not, will not get that. You see, I have to get what you will have. I see that I will withhold it from you. Otherwise, come under. How many of us fall in under, friends? When we go before God to give an account, what will we tell him? We didn't know better? Then who was leading us? Where is the spirit that you say I give you as a guarantee to give you direction? What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit in our lives? To lead us and to guide us into all truth. I will just be like one voice in the wilderness here. When it have many voices around that will convince your heart. But this is the voice that will stand as a witness against humanity on that day. So let us all bow hearts and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you this morning for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for the anointing and I thank you for the revelation knowledge that you give to your servant through your word this morning by the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray God that I have fulfilled your work, dear God. I preach and teach in this word as you would have it to be done, dear God. Guide, protect, and bless us in the body of Christ. I pray for Sister Gilda Hippolyta this time, Father. I cover her with the precious blood of Jesus from the crown of her head through her body to the sole of her feet. I pray, God, your anointing be released over her, her home, her family, her household, dear Father. And I pray, God, that your divine will in heaven be done on earth in the lives and affairs of her and her home and family and the ministry you have raised us up to, to, to carry on, dear Father. Bless this congregation, Father. Bless every member. Lord, we pronounce healing virtues upon them. We pray forgiveness upon their lives that they may have ought and words, thoughts or deeds, knowingly or unknowingly. And let your divine will in heaven be extended unto them. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen and amen. God bless us so very richly. Oh, honey, oh God. Is Lord. We truly thank God today for His Word, which is timely and encouraging to each and every one of us. We have come to the end of our service this morning, but as we before we dismiss, I'd just like to remind us our services are 7 to 30 p.m. nightly. Tomorrow night we have our Bible study on Tuesday, please God. We have the men's department is hosting a, a very interesting um topic of discussion, right? Uh, we are bringing a doctor to talk about vaccinations. It's not really the coronavirus vaccination, but vaccinations in general education. So we invite everybody to tune in. The link will be shared on the church page and all of that. So everybody who wants to attend will be a part of it at 7.30. On Wednesday morning at 9 a.m., we have our prayer and fasting. Wednesday evening at 7.30, we have our evangelism service on Thursday evening at 7.30 we have our prayer meeting and this coming Friday at 4pm I believe it's 4pm we are having our national youth convention right the link again will be shared via the Facebook page for all of us online and for those that are members of the bypass we will have the link shared on our group chats for this Friday at 4pm our national youth convention all right not forgetting this afternoon at 5pm is our discipleship program for Formerly known as Sunday School. There's a room for everybody, so please join in and be a part of our Sunday School this evening. With that being said, we would like to lift this morning's offering. So we'd just like to pray and ask God's blessings upon the offering at this time. Father, we give you thanks and praise this morning, Lord, for all that you have done and for all that you have blessed us with, dear God, that even now we are able to bless, oh God, the house of the Lord. And I pray, dear God, that as we give, we give with a cheerful heart, dear God, and we give knowing, God, that this will be used for the furtherance of your gospel, for the upkeep of your building, the kingdom, dear God. And I pray in Jesus' name that those that have to give, that they would give, dear God, and be blessed in return. And those that don't have, oh God, bless them, that they would be able to give freely and cheerfully. They would want to give and bless the house of the Lord, Father. This 
this morning. I pray for the offering that will be lifted, that it will be used in the correct way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so as we lift the offering, well, I made the announcements already. 